All right, welcome back, everybody. We're diving into some pretty intense AI stuff today. Oh, yeah. We're talking about large concept models. LCMs. LCMs. You got it. Oh. Now, you might be thinking, oh, great, another AI acronym, but trust me, this is a big deal. Huge. It is. This is brand new from Meta, like just dropped a couple of days ago. It's cutting edge. Absolutely cutting edge. We're basically bringing you the research conference breakdown right here right now. No jargon, though. Exactly. No jargon. We'll break it down so everyone can understand. For sure. Think of it like this. Imagine understanding the pure meaning of any sentence, no matter what language it's in. Oh. I know, right? That's the potential we're talking about here. Powerful stuff. Seriously powerful. We actually have a great source for this deep dive, an AI expert who went through Meta's whole research paper and the code. Let me tell you, it's dense. Oh, yeah. Dense is an understatement. Yeah. It's fascinating, though, how Meta, you know, with their focus on global communication, all those platforms. Facebook, through, Instagram, WhatsApp. Exactly. They're the ones pushing this forward. Makes sense, though, right? Their whole business relies on understanding all that content across so many languages. Over 200. Think about that. It's mind boggling. Content moderation, translation on that scale. I can't even imagine the cost. It's a nightmare, logistically and financially. They need a better way, a cheaper way to understand what's actually being said, and not just the words, but the core meaning. So that's where LCMs come in. But what's the difference between these and LLMs? We hear about those all the time, right? Right. LLMs, those are like your fancy autocomplete predicting the next word, the next word. Or like building a sentence one brick at a time. Exactly. But LCMs, they're going for the whole concept, the big picture meaning behind the sentence. Doesn't matter what language, what specific words are used. Okay, hold on. I got to ask about this Sona thing that keeps popping up in the research. What is that? So Sona, it's this existing model, a sentence embedding model, and Meta's using it as part of their whole LCM system. Think of sentence embeddings like giving each sentence a unique location on a map, but the map is based on meaning. So similar meanings would be clustered together. Exactly. And get this. Sona was built to handle multiple languages from the start. Which is perfect for Meta's goals. Oh, yeah. Fits perfectly. Okay, now this whole diffusion process thing. Mm. Honestly, it kind of threw me for a loop. Why add noise to the signal to get a clearer understanding? I know, right? Sounds counterintuitive, but it's actually really clever. Think of it like you've got this blurry image, right? And the diffusion process slowly removes the noise guided by this really advanced AI until you have a crisp, clear picture. So you're cleaning up the mess to see the true meaning underneath. Exactly. And to do that, they rely heavily on another AI superstar, the Transformer. I noticed the Transformers are still a key part of all this, even with the shift to LCMs. Yep. They wear a lot of hats in the LCM architecture. First, they help encode the context around a sentence, you know, all the stuff surrounding it that adds to the meaning. And then... They guide that diffusion process, make sure the noise removal is on point. So transformers are like the backbone of this new approach. Right, pretty much. And that also means LCMs might inherit some of the transformers quirks, you know, like biases or those times they go off on a tangent and generate nonsensical stuff, the hallucinations. That's and... a reminder that even with all this amazing progress, we need to stay critical. Absolutely always got to be aware of the potential downsides. And speaking of downsides, there were some specific limitations mentioned about Sona embeddings that I wanted to unpack. Yeah, let's dig into those. So remember, Sona was trained on machine translation data. Right. Lots of short, simple sentences. Exactly. So think about complex stuff like legal documents or scientific papers. Sona might struggle with that. So expecting Sona to grasp a complex legal argument is like asking someone who's only read children's books to analyze Shakespeare. Perfect analogy. And there's another thing. The way Sona maps those sentences to vectors, it might not work for all kinds of reasoning tasks. So even though it's amazing for what it was designed for, it might be limited in other areas. Right. And it all comes back to Meta's main focus, mm. social media. Of course. They care about understanding those short form communications on their platforms. These limitations might not be a big deal for them. Probably not. It'll likely work great for what they need. But yeah, broader uses might need more development. All right, so let's get back to those limitations. One thing that stood out to me was the mention of one tower and two tower architectures. Can you explain those? Sure. So Meta tried both approaches for their LCMs. With a one tower setup, you have a single transformer doing both the context encoding and the noise prediction during that diffusion process. It's a streamlined approach, especially for simpler content. So it's like a multitasking AI yeah. juggling those two complex tasks at once. Exactly. But when you're dealing with more complex stuff, a two-tower architecture might be better. How so? What's the difference there? Think of it as having specialized experts. 
one transformer focuses on encoding the context, while the other tackles the noise prediction and removal. They each have their own expertise. Ah, so it's like a team of AI experts, each with their unique skills, working together on a project. Perfect, but of course, there's a trade-off. A two-tower setup might be more powerful for complex stuff, but it also needs more computing power. Makes sense. More power usually means more resources. Exactly. But I think it's interesting how this whole diffusion process is more than just cleaning up noise. Yeah, it's like they're teaching the AI to deal with the messiness of human language. All our imperfections. You got it. We humans don't always communicate perfectly. We make typos, use slang, miss words, ramble. Oh, tell me about it. Sometimes I can barely decipher my own text messages. Well, that's where the diffusion process comes in. It helps LCMs make sense of all that imperfect data, you know? Extract the meaning that's actually intended. So it's like giving the AI a crash course and reading between the lines, figuring out what we really mean, even when we don't say it perfectly. Exactly. And that's so important for tasks that involve reasoning, logic, deduction, because even a small misunderstanding can throw everything off. So diffusion isn't just about noise reduction. It's about building a more resilient, adaptable AI. Absolutely. It's a whole new way of thinking about how we train these models. We're embracing the quirks of human language and using them to build more robust systems. I'm really starting to grasp the big picture here, but I think it's important to remember that this is all very new. What are some limitations we should be aware of? Good question. The potential is huge, no doubt, but there are still some hurdles to overcome. Like we talked about before, that choice of embedding space is super important. And Sona, while it's impressive, it has its limits. Right, it might not be the right tool for every job. Exactly. And remember, it was trained on machine translation data, which might not be a good fit for all types of text and reasoning tasks. It's like trying to use a city map to navigate a vast wilderness. The wrong tool for the job. Another great analogy. And here's another thing. Since LCMs rely on those transformers, they might inherit some of the biases we know transformers have. Right. So even though it's a step forward, we still need to be careful, critical in how we evaluate this technology. For sure. And here's another challenge researchers are facing. Right now, LCMs still treat sentences as individual units, even though they represent them as these continuous vectors. Wait, so how does that work? Well, that's the problem. It creates a kind of disconnect with how diffusion models work. Diffusion models typically operate on continuous data, not discrete units like sentences. It sounds like they're trying to fit square pegs into round holes. Yeah, kind of. And this discrepancy might be holding back the true power of diffusion models within the LCM framework. So it sounds like there's still a lot of work to be done before LCMs reach their full potential. Definitely. But the pace of AI research is crazy fast. I'm confident we'll see some major breakthroughs in the next few years. Okay, let's recap for our listeners. What are the key takeaways about LCMs? Well, first off, LCMs represent a huge shift in how AI understands language. It's not just about predicting words anymore. It's about grasping the underlying concepts, the meaning. And that opens up amazing possibilities like seamless communication across languages, better reasoning abilities, and a much deeper level of interaction with information. It's like we're witnessing the birth of a new kind of language, one that AI can truly understand and use to engage with the world. That's a beautiful way to put it. But like with any powerful technology, we have to be aware of the limitations. It's still early days and there are challenges, right? Like choosing the right embedding space, dealing with potential biases from transformers, and figuring out how to best integrate those diffusion models with how we represent sentences. So it's a mix of excitement and cautious optimism. Exactly. And it's a story that's still unfolding. We're at the forefront of a new era in AI, and we all have a role to play in shaping its development, making sure it's used responsibly. Will said. And if you, our listeners, want to explore this world of AI and LCMs even further, we have experts ready to help at scogeny.com. They can answer your questions, walk you through the technical details, you know, really help you understand the potential of LCMs. It's like having your own personal AI guide right there with you. Exactly. And it's not just about the technical stuff either, right? We got to think about the bigger picture. How will this impact society, our culture, even the way we communicate as humans? It's almost like we're not just teaching AI to understand our language, but learning a new way to communicate with AI ourselves. Yeah. And as the technology keeps evolving, we have to think critically about the consequences, the good and the bad. So it's a journey for both us and the AI. Absolutely. And we're just at the beginning. Who knows what amazing applications we'll see as researchers keep pushing the boundaries of LCMs.
it really feels like we're on the verge of something huge. Human and artificial intelligence working together, unlocking possibilities we can barely imagine. I think you're right. And that's why it's so important to stay informed, ask tough questions, and really engage in these conversations about the role of AI in our lives. Well said. And on that note, we've reached the end of our deep dive into large concept models. We hope you learned a lot and had some fun along the way. Don't forget, this is just a glimpse into a field that's changing every day. Stay curious, keep learning, and never be afraid to explore the unknown. Until next time, keep those concepts clear and those embeddings noise-free.